Last week, I had the pleasure of having Dean Fraser spend some time with me. Well, the story couldn't be done last week. We've decided to continue and do a part two. But you would have heard about his being born in Kingston, going to Coxon in Clarendon, coming back to Kingston, going back there, and about the role his grandfather played in his life, early, early years, the three and all them things. And then his aunt, Juanita Salmon. Wow, she really got him going. You heard about Babe O'Brien. Perhaps you could do a little Googling to find out a little bit more about that man. And we took the break at the point where he was, before he was 15, sent by Alfred Babe O'Brien to Sonny Bradshaw, the late Sonny Bradshaw. So I'm going to go back over to Dean because he went across from where he lived to Harborview, to Southern Cross, to meet Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you for joining. This is Profile and Faye Ellington. So, Dean Fraser, your life has been an interesting one, but you know what I notice about you? You speak with such joy about everything. You don't seem to have any regrets or sadness, or you're not focused on them. When you went to Harborview, was it the first time you were getting to Harborview? My first time ever. And yeah. this was to find Sonny Bradshaw. Was it easy to find where he lived? Very easy, because... The bus terminus is right in front of his house. So I left Trenchtown, uh, 4th Street, Upper Rima there. And I just took my bus to downtown and right at West Parade, you know, there was two, but in that you had a little um, the island JOS between. Bus stand, right, I remember so, it. You know, I jumped on a two bus and psh, I went to Harbour View and so he just put me down in the room and said, here are the folders, play what you can play. And he went away and I got there maybe 8 a.m. And about 6 p.m., you know, he came back and he... You mean he left the building, left the house? He left. He went to do what, you know, what he, he wanted or what he was supposed to do. And I stayed and I played and thing and thing. And then he came and he said to me, you okay? You, um, you found anything interesting and all of that? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, all right, see you again tomorrow. So I... <laughs> They're testing you, man. Yeah, so Tuesday morning, early, I am back. Oh, you found your love. Yeah. It was music and not cricket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I... I I went there for maybe three or four days, and then on the fifth day, I, he said, um, we are going to have band rehearsals this evening. So while I'm there sitting, I see Tony Ramsey, the bass player, walk in, and my nemesis, his name is Ox Brown, <laughs> that guitar player walked in. Trombone player Joe McCormack, yep. Winston Clark. The singer? Yes. Vocalist Winston Clark. Yes, Winston Grennan, the drummer. And um, Errol, I, I'm not remembering Errol's last name, but the band came and... These yeah. are grown These men. Are, yeah. And you are 50, not, yeah. not even yet 50. Yeah, and... Ox Brown look over at me and say, what are you doing here? <laughs> so I said, I'm come for play. And he said, play? And he said, go home. <laughs> You're a little boy. And so, you know, Tony, take up for me same time. Tony said, no, man, leave the youth. You know, because the youth was like my middle name now. Because you know? so, you're the youth among yes. the whole of them. So, um... You know, we started to play the band. I remember Sonny putting on the charts and say, OK, let's really go and count off. I always start playing. I don't know where I am. I am just there looking. And so Joe McCormack, now the trombone player, says, come on, man. And you know, he helped me along and things. So that was my first rehearsal and all of that. And then the first gig now 
was... Oh, soon after that was the first gig? A couple gig. of days, you Mercy. know. So the first gig now was um, at Devon House. And I, you know, we start playing at Devon House at 7.30 because we played for like dinner and then, you know, a little dance music. And so I got there maybe about 6.30 because I was early. And um, went in and we started to play and I am there just trying to find my way around and the, 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 the thing that scared me the most was I am facing the, my audience but every time I turn right, Ox was looking at me like that <laughs> and it just intimidate me and me just nervous, me, me afraid. So you didn't look at Mr. Bradshaw? No, sir. Mr. Bradshaw was the easiest person to get along with. Ox was the person? Ox Brown was the man that gave me a hard time. And, you know, Winston Green on the drummer and Tony used to say, give you the chance, no man. And then um, a popular song came out, Skylarking. Skylarking. Right, with that saxophone intro. I practiced it, I practiced it, I practiced it. <laughs> anyway, so the night the band was ready to play and I, I played the intro, I, and we also did a, a JBC TV appearance at the time, and you know, so I'm really dropping into the groove now, I'm getting at the groove, you know, so this I may be, this is about like two months in the band and all of that, but then the thing that most of the band liked about me was that I was able to do all these reggae songs that the other singers, they never execute, you know, yes. enough. So, you know, they started to like me and thing. And then, but then I, I really started to sit down and pay attention. And then one day Sonny comes to me and he said, look here. And come and he say, you have a lady named Melba Liston. She's going to come to Jamaica. The Prime Minister is bringing her here to help to develop our music and... American Melbourne. Yes, trombone, player. jazz trombone player. And he says, you are going to be a part of that. You mean he was sending you for further he training? He was sending me there. Ah, so from the Sonny Bradshaw 7, yes. he then sent you on to the School of Music because yes. Melba Liston came to the School of Music. Not really. No? She actually came to UWE. She came to UWE. What yes. she did class at the School of Music? The School of Music situation maybe is another story. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so she came to UWE. She came to UWE. So, so we used to go and have classes in that little house to the right of the, the main gate when you get into you. It, yes. it was called the old farm house, yes. something like that. At the University of the West Indies. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So, you know, we, we got there. So the classes were all at the University of the West Indies? Yes. What was it like to be tutored by Melba Liston? Well, first, when you have a band leader like Sonny Bradshaw, you're talking about being professional, being on time, getting things right, you know? and um, making your appearance on stage look, you know, up to scratch. Then you come to a person like Melba Liston who see music like wide, you know, she, she says, okay, I want you to come, I want you to play this part, and I don't want you to doogle, 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 doogle around. Be quiet, when it's time for you to play, play. And then she says, if I show you the cards here, C, D, G, you don't have to play C, D, G. She says, play what you hear. She gave you the opportunity to be creative. To open, yes. And, and she was just a beautiful person. She was a lady who, you know, she fun, loving. And, and everybody who had anything to do with Melba Liston speaks so highly of yeah. her and her influence on them. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Dean Fraser. So you had Alfred Babe O'Brien. You had Sonny Bradshaw. You had Melba Liston. You had the best of the crop. Oh, you're so lucky. We'll be right back after this. You're lucky, buddy.